Welcome to Talk Studios. Today on Pot Talk, we'll be discussing a few articles, along with a few other things. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Talk Studios, by clicking the subscribe button below. Like the video today by hitting the thumbs up. Share it if you like it, and turn on notification bell for all notifications to make sure you never miss an episode. So we're going into the news today with the OMMA. Yes. We get an update. We haven't checked in in a while. I think last time we checked in was in September with... Uh, we talked a little bit about the new director and then new rules and the seed to sale contract. Um, and the first uh, recalls. And the original recalls back in August, which they don't even seem to have on here anymore. Uh, which is interesting. But, uh, you know what I mean? Wasn't that right there? It was like right, it yeah. was in September. Or at the earliest in August, but none of that's even it's in there. It's definitely after the slushy stuff. Yeah, there was a bunch of stuff in between there. Um, that's interesting. Censorship. OMMA news censorship. <laughs> they probably just... Uh... You know, confiscated, destroyed all of the product. I think we'll have to ask Jess about this. He might have some theories. Uh, he may. So, the first one in October was an urgent notice on another recall. This one, a recall of Green Motivation, uh, what we thought was 111 LLC products, which now may be three. Maybe that's how they wrote three. Uh, yes. And instead of doing you know, traditional numerals just went with number style. But uh, yes, we noticed a pattern that suggests this might be the reasoning. Uh, but we got two batches recalled. And uh, with the way they wrote the article, it was almost kind of hard to tell which they were recalling, whether they were a grower or a processor. So we kind of looked into that. If you'll kind of read through here, uh, We'll jump into the deep stuff here in a second, Sean. We okay. Can't. Well, it's all, like they are turning themselves in here. They're the ones that said the products failed pesticide testing and may not be safe for consumers. So it seems like they got out in front of it. Which is responsible of them. Yeah. Um, but it's a lot of products. Bars. Uh Dank Confections, Fresh Bake, Mr. Max, Pot Pops, and Pusher. Hmm. Oh, also Caramel. Caramel. And there was also a labeling error on top of that, apparently. So that could either be labeled yeah. one of those two batches. Uh, but yeah, at least they came forth and uh, told everybody about it, and now they're getting their recall, which is not exactly how that last recall went. Uh, no. No. <laughs> But uh, we... They're like, we'll be issuing a statement. To... <laughs> uh, you can talk to our, our attorney. We won't be talking to you directly. Uh, like the they, OMMA lies, You know, they tried. Basically is what they Try to reach out. But uh, there was definitely less cooperation on that last recall. So we did look oh, into yeah. it a little bit more because we were curious about whether they were a grower or a processor or what all they did. And we found a few things. Uh Got their fingers in several Yeah, parts. looking into licenses, it looks like, and this is where we noticed the naming conventions. So we have Green Motivation. This is in the uh, OMMA growers list of licensed growers in the state. We have Green Motivation, Inc. with email greenmotivation at gmail in Blanchard and McLean County, uh, which makes sense. You keep your grow in a rural area. Uh, then we have yeah. dispensaries listed. And now we have Green Motivation, what we thought was 11, uh, I guess is one, one or two, Green Motivation 2. Because when we see the email, we see two here. And this one's run out of the city. And then in processors, we saw Green Motivation 111 or Green Motivation 3, as we found through the email. And also here in the city. That, yeah, that one's also here in the city. Uh but that was the only one mentioned in the recall notice was Green Motivation 3. So I'm assuming that means that it was their processed 
oils that were being yeah, used. Yeah, just their edibles. Well, that they had yeah. processed oils that were being provided to these edible companies that the edible companies then made their edibles from and distributed that were then being recalled. Uh, but we were curious uh, more about them because we couldn't find a website or any information. So Sean did a deep dive and found their registered agent. And that was where we kind of started to connect the dots. And we saw that she was the registered agent for Green Motivation 3 and Green Motivation 2 LLC. Probably Green Motivation as well, but we didn't see that. So we found uh, another business that she was the agent for, and that's Cup Cozy Pillow <laughs> LLC. And we were like, what is yes. a cup cozy pillow? And why is a cup cozy yeah, pillow? But Sean found all these answers for us. Um, we found that they're out of Las Vegas and the cup cozy pillow LLC was their first venture and where they made it big crowdsourcing this first product. It wasn't what I thought it was when I heard the title. Um, yeah, no, it, it's interesting. It's like, uh, we should play the video and let Monica explain. We do, yeah, let's see, let's see how they pitch it. I haven't watched the full video, and I'm very excited. Hello, Kickstarters. We're Michael and Monica Almaguer from Las Vegas, Nevada. When I was fired from my job during my maternity leave, I started my own online business. She would spend hours working with her laptop on the sofa, and one thing always got her frustrated. Why don't you tell them? Okay. Sitting on the couch today, yeah. my cup is too far away. Coffee table in my A, it doesn't matter anyway. I want my drink right next to me, not in the next galaxy. By my side, it's safe and spilled. What's so hard? What's the deal? Drink spill all the time. Costing money, yours and mine. Kids and Fido bring the law. This is exactly what I thought it would be. Clean up mess. Why all the daily stress? All of this is not okay. And so we found a better way. Ladies wow. and gentlemen, now introducing the cup Can't cozy use countertops. Oh. This is the cup cozy pill, though your drink saving hero. Use it every day to keep the spills away. Pillow sizes large and small, it holds all cups short and tall. Use it on the couch and floor, in your bed and more. From the handle, you can tell it really wow. does travel well. Pretty covers of but wake the foam inside it insulates. You know that doesn't work if there's any liquid in those cups. It's like, Mom, you know there's no liquid in these cups, right? spent the last six months fine-tuning every aspect of this patent pending design to bring you the world's best cup-holding pillow. Your support today helps us move forward with our first production run, and we're working with a top-notch... So this is their prior venture. ...to bring Cup Cozy Pillow to you. This is the Cup Cozy Pillow, your drink-saving hero. Use it every day to keep your spills away. Pillow sizes large and small, a hollow cup, short and tall. Use it on the couch and floor, in your bed and more. I wonder if it's an American manufacturer. It really does travel well, pretty covers of a... I wonder if we kept this production in the dust. In all homes, this will be the world's best accessory. Join us now and you will see your love. Don't let your drink be far from you. So sad and lonely feeling. There's no liquid in that cup. I'm so, I'm so frustrated by this fact. Your stays cold for the game. No more nasty carpet stains. you love your cup. I mean, a closed bottle won't spill. Why do you need a, a cup cozy cup. pillow for that? They start. They broke into song, and I my head almost they, exploded. Okay, so that was the clip of what the cup cozy pillow is, um, and I don't understand why the main thing they kept putting in there were bottles with closed lids on them. Like, when has that ever been a problem? They, they solved that with the lid. They've, they've got four kids. I bet they leak. So it pops off. I don't know. But they kept using the cup cozy pillow and turning it sideways with a cup in it that doesn't have any liquid. It's right. like, they, what are you trying to prove? home with the actors they had. You know, they didn't want to cause more spills. If your toddler is spilling something and your anti-spill uh, pillow commercial it's gonna send a terrible message i just don't understand how they're how they're I proving how that they their decided, product works we're gonna make this bad boy a musical i mean that's what uh, marketing and advertising told them would get it done and uh i'm not to be over critical but they're not great singers and uh the fact that they still went for it i makes me respect them all the more so 
her reasoning, she goes through it here. Uh, she was inspired when working on her laptop on the living room couch. While working, she likes to have a drink close by, and she kind of talks about this. Uh, even with the coffee table, it still requires me to move. I mean, move her laptop, take a sip, then put the laptop back on her lap, and only to have to repeat the process all over again a few minutes later when I need another drink. I mean, some people's lives are m more difficult than I could imagine. She's just spilling uh, stuff all the time. Right? Well, they should stop wearing white all the time like that, and it wouldn't be such an issue. It's true. They've got four uh, kids and two dogs, so spills are like just plaguing this carpet. home. Like, necessity is the mother of invention, right? So, I mean, she... God, this is just astounding. It's never so a product times... I would have thought I needed in a million years, and still don't, but like... I get where she's coming from, at the very least. Well, the reason that you probably don't have this need is because of her strategy here she tried to take that led her to this, like, directly. Other times, she would take her chances and just allow her cup to free float in the middle of the seat cushion like a goddamn maniac. Yeah, that is crazy. Almost begging to be spilled. Not even almost. Trying to, come, trying to come up with a solution of wanting her drink right next to her without fear of spilling was the aha moment. I should get a desk. Oh, no, that's not what she said. It's, uh, and the rest, as they say, is history. And it turned out she didn't discover desks. She patented a new invention instead, or she doesn't have to move. Dude, this venture we was it profitable enough to bankroll a processor, uh, dispensary, and grow up. How many of these things but, do they sell? But not successful enough to figure out how Roman numerals work. No. Uh, they have a full range of videos, apparently. Oh, my. On the Cup Cozy Pillow? Or on their dispensary? They have a YouTube channel. Pros. It's only got 16 subscribers. Oh, man. They've got a lot a of... Gander. There's one with the husband dressed as Jesus. Wait, it's the it says that command. this channel doesn't have any content. Oh, Go there videos. <clears throat> they just haven't organized their page very well oh wow so is this on like uh i guess they the were they on or something i don't know this they all were uploaded thunder years ago is what it or was no called. one of them Fun was uploaded a month ago man do they still live in vegas this while she's in a store Pitching it. Like, Get out of here. We told you you can't shoot your commercials in here anymore. Oh, yeah, this no, is the they, Cup Cozy. Look, now. one she more did. time. It's the Cup Cozy. Don't, don't kick me out. I have a right to be here. That's interesting. Okay, so she's the registered agent for uh, Green Motivation 1, 2, and 3 and Cup Cozy LLC. Cup, Cup Cozy Pello LLC. I like the so, Jesus video they have. Where? The 11th Amendment, oh. spill not thy drinks. Well, they're from Vegas, so they can do sacrilege like this and get away with it. You know, who would talk about writing extra commandments? I mean, it's, it's madness. Pretty great. I think we talked about the 11th Commandment a couple episodes ago, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's the family and uh mastermind that behind was the free motivation deep dive i've ever done on someone right i feel i felt super invasive but we didn't have any information about green motivation now um, i have too much right at least we know they're a family-owned company mm -hmm. makes you feel like they're more responsible to community but our theory you know was that maybe Initially, we were thinking a couple of large gentlemen out in Vegas, gentlemen, and uh, maybe they had a bubbler or something that they kept spilling, you know, on their on their couch. So they invent that, and it has an extra slot in there. We didn't realize that it was probably for a coffee cup handle. Not what I expected at all. Yeah. We figured that with the was, crossover uh... that it was going to be like a bong and like a spoon little yeah. little piece you know jars mason jars is what you would put in there nope but it turns, turns out, out super charismatic sing-songy lady from vegas 
just trying and to get her out. family. So uh, that's the first article we have. The second one in October I'm gonna get is a cup the cozy new. Now. Right, you should order I'll be one. Giving a review future. next. We can uh, advertise episode. it and see if they would like us to promote it on the channel. Oh my god! I think I mean it works. We like drinks. Uh, I mean, I have a you know brandless water bottle here that looks very much like the water bottle that they used all up in their commercial. Yeah, a, a lidded cup we could use. But I think this one may even be the same non-brand that they used in their commercial. You can snag one on Amazon. Okay. 30 bucks. So the the next thing we have is emergency rules. Uh, and we'll probably get that. What was the shipping on that? Seven days? We get that prime? or It's it's prime, free shipping. Yeah. Free one day delivery okay. as well. Well, we'll have that tomorrow to talk about them. It's uh, uh, very interesting looking. They've like photoshopped pictures of it like on the beach with like a happy couple picnicking. I mean, can you just do that with the sand around you? Like just put your drink into the sand? It looks like they've photoshopped it into like stock photos. I really like it. So you don't think it's actually in the sand? Uh, no, I don't think any rational person would drag one of these things out to the beach. Right? Because the sand would get all up in your microfiber and yeah. it would just be a mess. It's a mess. You would have it's a to mess nobody, nobody wants to deal with. For the next I person it, looking it, for it. It is like foam. It could be a flotation device. Yeah, you think? I think it might yeah. become waterlogged. I don't think it was designed for yeah, uh, probably not. buoyancy. So they added what are we looking at here now? These are the new emergency rules that they put out in the middle of October. So they made some small changes. Uh, let's see, adding remediation and uh, a few other definitions and changes in language. Um, changing some of the process guidelines for inventory tracking clarifying the copies of sample field logs and documents related to transportation and sampling are included in the types testing records business licensees have to maintain. I think cool, somebody cool. needed to do a read through on this and uh, I don't know if it's me, but these are reading odd. Adds definition of remediation and definition of decontamination. That one works. But yeah. this one was weird. In the types testing records businesses business licensees have to maintain i think we need a of i'm going to go yeah. ahead and do an insert right there edit uh, add of okay by including these documents in the list they must be kept on site and readily available for seven years Woo. which was some of the issues that uh they ran into on that last recall they were not maintaining proper inventory records or distribution uh Medical marijuana waste disposal. We saw the waste disposal licensees on there earlier. Yeah. It creates a new provision that That'd would require fun. commercial, right? Like trimmings and stuff, like the. Just burning weed all day in a, a kiln or something. Yeah. You think, I wonder, we, we can, we can pull it up. Uh, I wonder how fun you could make the waste disposal process. Like I mean, what you... type of cool. Uh, instrument you could use to dispose of it and yeah. how close to it you're allowed to be i think you could get like an like basically like a a crematorium <laughs> just be shoveling weed and do it all day but i wonder if you could do uh because i want i'm sure the thc content on it has to be pretty low mm -hmm. when you're burning it all off you might get some residual well and some uh, that's like bad yeah, that you don't want to smoke, probably. Yeah. It's oh yeah, definitely not. I'd be wearing a respirator. So you couldn't make it very fun at all, then. Mm -mm. No, I mean, just the burning of things all day would be the fun part. It's a pyromaniac dream, right? So, under current law, commercial licensees may dispose of root balls, stems, fan leaves, seeds, and stalks on their own, 
but must send all other medical marijuana waste to a waste disposal facility. Documentation will help OMMA compliance monitor disposal and dissuade diversion of plant material. Well, that's good. So flour and any like bad batches of edibles, concentrates. So the stuff you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, they would be, be stuff you wouldn't burn. want. Well, then the burns, the, the, so the stuff you can dispose of on your own, you could have fun burning, technically. I mean, not yeah, too much fun. Yeah, not too much gross. Fun. Burning stems smell bad. Yeah, fan leaves, seeds, and stalks. Can't you get, uh, don't see burning seeds, isn't that problematic? Doesn't that cause? I would keep the seeds. Is that a, uh, like an urban myth that like smoking seeds causes infertility or something? Oh, I've heard that urban legend. I don't think it does that, but it does kind of make my head hurt. So, <laughs> so that could be affecting my nether regions somehow. I don't know. Yeah, who knows? From the head. Um, so, uh, the next one they did was prohibited acts. Uh, it clarifies that licensees shall only sell or otherwise transfer medical marijuana to Oklahoma licensed medical marijuana businesses, and that licensee shall not sell mar medical marijuana to out of state individuals or entities. I wonder what, what gaping loophole they had to throw that in there for. Yeah, I was like, oh, dear God. But you didn't say that we couldn't sell it to you like didn't other say we states. couldn't send it to Oregon. Technically, uh, right? Even though it's illegal, like everywhere and probably in it their state. It could be something like uh, someone in Colorado or someone in another legal state that also owns, you know, share in a company here uh, <sighs> was mixing and, max or mi mixing and matching products. You know what I mean? Yeah, or if, like, some other states, like, you know how California has the rule, this is more of, like, a possession thing, but they have that law that says that you can technically leave their state possessing marijuana, yes. like, on a plane or whatever. Yeah. Uh, they are, you know, they can't guarantee that it's legal when you land, wherever you land, or that, that it's technically everywhere. legal for you to, to even travel on the plane with it, but they're allowing you to possess it up until the plane. And I'm wondering if it's like that, where it's like, TSA has come out and said, they're not messing with it. Yeah, exactly. Unless you're like burning down on the plane. Yeah. Or trafficking weight. Cause you're not allowed to smoke or yeah. Traffic. You're, you're also not allowed to traffic using airlines. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, um, they still frown on that, but they're not going to arrest you for a vape pen or, or a dime bag. Yeah. Uh, They're looking for bombs and stuff. So and I'm thinking maybe other states have like loose, like California have loose rules on how the marijuana gets into the state mm -hmm. for commercial distribution or something. I mean, I yeah. don't think California does because I think they're pretty strict. But yeah. if some neighboring state had something like that uh, and there was a loophole in our laws that said that didn't say that you couldn't take it out of the state then I could see them needing to put this in. But I want to know who who flirted with that loophole where they were like, we got to tie this up. I mean, I... There's a highway of marijuana going to Arkansas right now. Who knows? Actually, you know, you, that's probably what it was, <laughs> Arkansas. Yeah. Aren't they the ones that are doing, like, getting authorized to do the testing and... Arkansas yeah, that was stuff. weird for a while there. Like they legalized medical marijuana, but then they like wouldn't let, it was still like they couldn't grow weed or have dispensaries. Well, we got a new wave of uh, states that have legalized, you know, various yes. levels of recreational or medical or mushrooms. Um, but a lot of things- Or decriminalizing crack cocaine. Yeah, I mean, I think some things are good and some things are less good, you know? Yeah. For the no, I'm, I'm fine with uh, ending the war on drugs. Yeah, because that's not how you treat a drug addict. Nope. They don't get very I mean, good treatment. Throwing them in jail is not going to do anything but cost you a ton of money in the long run. Like I know, and make them wise. have to go through so much more trouble to get their drugs. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not this like crack not was in it. a butt before I got it. <laughs> yeah, you can still taste some of that butt on it, actually. <laughs> um... So, prohibited acts, yeah. No, no. Don't be selling to out-of-state individuals or entities. 
uh, I really hope we find out what that was about. So they made some labeling and packaging changes. Adds prohibitions that packages and labels cannot contain the Oklahoma State Department of Health or OMMA logos. Compliance wow. inspectors have found several instances where this is occurring. <laughs> <laughs> it also adds requirement for labels of non-edible products so they are more uniform with edibles and provide important information such as name, license number, batch number, quantity, and ingredients. Uh, These items are essential for information essential information for a patient to have access to in the event of a recall. I know I, I used to have that complaint all the time to like some of the first places that had edibles. I was like, so what's in this? Right. And they're like, I don't know. We were we were wondering that same they don't they're not really putting it on there. Tastes like I think cherry. It's sugar. Yeah, it tastes <laughs> like cherry. Uh, <laughs> and I remember even asking, you know, I wonder if, uh, you know, do you guys have any flour that they use or any of the processed oils or anything that they use to make this so I can like check out the flowers effects and check out the edibles effects and kind of see. And they were like, we don't know what flour, you know, they use to make the oil that they put into the edible. Yeah. Or we're we will it. tell you where it's grown or who grows it. Yeah. That was a big deal too, where they were like, no, nah, that's proprietary. Like, Wait, what's proprietary? The thing I'm trying to buy from you and learn about right now, the product? Yeah. Secret product. Uh, so... Like selling microchips. Right? It's like, I'm not going to be able to figure out how you grew it or how you grew it just by learning about who grew, yeah. who grew it. I, I'm not I'm not casing the place. You know? It's like, I'm not trying to rob your grow. I just want to know more about it. Who grew it is the weirdest phrase. Like every time I said it, it felt wrong. And I, I would try to say growed. And I'm like, well, I know that's not right. Who, who grew it? Who grew? Sounds like a like a name yeah. in some it's one fiction of those things novel. If you say it too who much, grew? it sounds meaningless. Uh, yeah, which is how they felt, which is why they stopped telling people who grew it. <laughs> You know, it's meaningless. You know, I found that to be problematic myself, especially with the edibles and concentrates, because I know like you're using like trim and stuff and maybe weed that isn't pretty enough to sell or might have mold or something on it. Like I know the finest uh, of flour hardly ever makes it into any of the, uh, you know, processed goods. I know. Some of them, like you can tell that when they market the ones that have like, that are made like, pre-rolls like this is made with actual flour yes that's like, like when mcdonald's was like now it's all white meat chicken you're like well what, what what's been on the menu this is a hundred percent meat wait wait, the wait meat? it has been the meat? meat is now a hundred percent meat oh no i thought back to every saying, happy meal i ever had as a kid i could understand it if you said that like the meal or like the burger was like 30 percent meat but yeah. the fact that the meat was only 30% meat for a long time seems problematic. Yeah, pre-rolls and stuff like that are often the pink slime of the cannabis industry. <laughs> Toenails and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, it's the beaks and stuff. Uh, so, which one? Okay, so the more information on basic labeling, uh, they're also requiring more uh, basic labeling requirements for wholesale transfers between growers and or processors, which include name, license number, batch number, date of harvest or production, and a statement that the medical marijuana has passed testing or failed testing and is being transferred for remediation purposes only. Why that would you pack so it? Much sense. Oh, like it's, okay. You have to label it, it for... Well, like before you pass it off, you have to uh, basically indicate that it's passed pesticide testing or failed mm -hmm. it before you hand it off. So yeah. that at that next step, we've insulated everything before that. So from there, all the processors doing when he's making the edibles is guaranteeing there's no contaminants between obtaining that wholesale product and selling it to the dispensary as a packaged good, you know? Yeah. And before that, they didn't do any guarantees on the handoff. So you'd get processors because they were the last ones with their hands on the shit and they weren't able to say that 
it wasn't clean before it got to them. Yeah. So that it's a lot harder to argue that it wasn't your fault. But this, you know, this makes it a lot easier to make those arguments. The last hey, one, it looks this like. This is awesome, man. We are really like running a tight, tighter ship here in Oklahoma than we have been. It's like we're it's running for consumers. Eight ships. It's really good it's like for before, consumers. Before this, we were just like all hanging on to a dinghy. And now we're yeah. actually running a ship. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's not even like a tight ship. It's just a ship now. Uh, we're all in the boat. Let's see. Ads requirement is the last one on here. Some ads of us more than others. Right? Some of us are being drugged behind the boat, still in the dark about what's going on inside the boat. Some of us need to re-up their card before they get kicked off the boat. I know. Uh, we could talk about it. We'll, we'll go into a lot of detail about when your card expires here in a second. Uh, let's see on this last one here. Uh, it adds a requirement that growers and processors store medical marijuana and products under conditions and in a manner, in a manner. Another, I'm going to add an A there. In manner, that's not a thing, that protects against contamination and deterioration. Also requires it to be stored in fully sealed, closed receptacles when not in use. Put the lid on that. So let's let's just let's just lay this out. So if, if you need this rule, jar. yeah, or just just like a not open container. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying, like before this rule, people were like, we don't have to keep the stuff closed. It can just be open to air or COVID or whatever. And dump it in uh, the pile in the storeroom. Dank infections. So I asked you if you'd had any of those. Those are one of the ones that showed up on recall. And I'd had dank infections cookies before. Delicious cookies. But when I got the pack, like the actual good, uh, opened it up, it was just like smashed and melted. And it had been uh -huh. in a fridge. And I'm, and I'm like, how, if you're keeping it at a temperature that's safe for food to be consumed after it's sold, how could it possibly yeah. be melted at any point before that, you know? Transportation. Like at some point, it was kept below the proper condition temperature. Yeah. And in a box in someone's spoiled. car, and they, like, had to run in somewhere, and it melted. In a closed locker secured to the inside of a vehicle, I believe, was the requirement on transportation. But, uh, yeah, doesn't say anything. We talked about that, whether... The old rules required temperature and this one adding it shows that they weren't explicitly required to maintain them in proper conditions yeah it messed a lot of the cartridges up uh being exposed to like heat during transportation i remember that being yep. like one of the they main like reasons gunk. they failed and stuff they like gunk up and crystallize and shit no bueno uh and turn dark i've seen them turn like like a dark brown from being yeah. kept. I don't know if it's in too much heat or too much cold, but I think it was uh, just like it was bad to begin with. <laughs> yeah, you think so? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. This was in uh, this was in DC, so oh. it was it that was. delivery service. Oh, that is black market stuff where it's like I don't technically, know. or Not gray as market. Far as I know, seemed right. like a green market to me. <laughs> I think a lot of that stuff could be stuff that failed out of state. Yeah, you think this was the stuff that Oklahoma was shipping out of state and selling? Like, hey, yeah, hey, you can't do that. Like, we're only we're selling it to Oklahomans only when they come to DC. <clears throat> I mean, like, Oklahoma had a bad problem of us finding stuff that failed out of Oregon and California in stores here. Yep, and they didn't even like change the box the stuff came in. It's like this isn't licensed to be sold here in Oklahoma. No, the the publicity for the failed products was less than the marketing established from their branding already so they made the determination to just push forward yeah and not care uh but i remember that with a lot of the first dispensaries you're like oh yeah where are you guys from are you guys from the city or like tulsa or like i grew up in long beach the indoor again and <laughs> <laughs> yeah they call it the emerald triangle i don't know if you know that county area up there but yeah. we've had farms there for generations we just recently decided to move to oklahoma i'm from reason. arcata california fourth generation <laughs> i live here now uh my other siblings were distributed amongst the other recently legalized states to establish yeah. residency i've got family everywhere 36 not really everywhere 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I would say everywhere. It's really kind of there's a, there's really a pattern to it. It's in the states where we've legalized marijuana. I would never uh, go back to living in a illegal state ever again. So here's here's a good one. Uh, testing standards and thresholds. This is the next major chunk we have here, and this is a you know big chunk. Looks like they just cleaned up the language a little bit, took out redundancies. So, samples must be collected and labeled in accordance with applicable statutes and these rules. Strikes duplicative language that was intended to be struck during prior rulemaking. Authorized growers gave it a second yeah. read before they put it out the first time. <laughs> yeah, turns out we had said some shit over and over again we got real high then yeah. last night of drafting and no accidentally cop we accidentally copy and pasted the whole middle of it to the end of it and nobody noticed until we did the reread on emergency rule uh so we're clarifying that um jim authorizes no longer grow- works here yeah jim uh i think his name was tommy tommy jr yeah <laughs> yeah no it's at least a nepotism hire <laughs> Uh, authorizes growers to sell, transfer, and processors to purchase process, a harvest batch that has failed microbiological testing for remediation purposes only, strikes and moves language requiring dispensaries to maintain copies of certificates of analysis. That makes sense. Yeah. It seems like the processors and the growers and the OMMA should be primarily responsible to make sure it doesn't even get to like the shelves. Yeah, but also they're saying like you can, you can take uh, stuff that you can't smoke or eat, like flour that you can't smoke or eat now because it's failed for like mold or white powder mildew or something, and Mm -hmm. you can kill the spores while you're making it into oil or something. It seems like what so when they're saying for means like turning it into something else. I thought when they're using remediation. Like here, it's more like trying to uh, fix a problem. Like remediate is to like uh, yeah, like return to two parties the way discuss a problem and come to a. Conclusion. Let's define it. You know. Okay. Let's see. Cannabis. The act of remedying something. Yeah, remediation particular... versus decontamination of cannabis. I, so I it's don't a think remedy. it's the traditional. Yeah, I don't think it's the dr- traditional definition of remediate. I think this means like they actually are turning the weed into something else. I was thinking it was like, like this part where it says reversing or stopping environmental damage type of idea where it's like you're trying to eliminate the exposure of the public to this so you can either yeah. decontaminate it and remediate i just sent you a link what you got uh the industry mm. and because they have to do it themselves or pay someone to do it before they can sell it uh they're treating it more like bringing it back into sellable state, like what you were saying. But if they can get it back to where it passes testing and it's solid for the purposes it's being used for, then there's nothing wrong with it. But before they had done these rules, they didn't properly have... Yeah. Now now I know. So... Strikes and moves... Yeah, we already did that one. Uh Expands and clarifies the duties of growers, processors, and dispensaries to obtain and retain uh, for two years copies of certificates of analysis for all medical marijuana and products they purchase. It also requires growers and processors to provide these copies to the department immediately upon request and to other licensees who request copies in order to be in compliance with these requirements. Also requires growers and processors to notify the department when their medical marijuana or products fail testing. So that's what I was saying earlier, where it puts the onus on the growers and the processors to cut it off before it even gets to the dispensaries. Because what does the dispensary know about testing compared to a processor or a grower? But uh, that's good. I like that they're doing that. 
process for retesting harvest and production batches that fail, re that fail testing. Requires the reserve sample to be used for retesting and outlines protocol for collection of a new sample if the reserve sample is not sufficient. Allows retesting to be limited to the category of analyte that failed initial testing. Limits costs by not requiring full panel re retesting. Uh, if retest gives passing results, requires second retest to confirm safety and suitability of medical marijuana or product and also requires any batch that does not have two successful tests for each analyte to be remediated, decontaminated, or disposed. So they're doing like a double uh, double test for all of them almost, which is good, because they didn't even all have the first test, like on those ones for the recalls and fallouts. Allows for harvest and production batches that have been remediated or decontaminated and have failed testing to be retested in accordance with the new retesting procedures established in J. Prohibits further decontamination of production batches that failed retesting and allows for harvest batches that have been de decontaminated and failed testing for microbials to be disposed of or remediated. Well, we got a lot of use of remediated. Uh, definitely hammering it in there. Remediation in the context of medical marijuana. Uh, authorizes growers to sell transfer to a processor and processor to purchase process a harvest batch that has failed micro microbiological testing for mediation purposes only. Clarifies that the production batch must be fully tested, prohibits processors from selling medical marijuana from harvest batch if failed testing or that failed testing. And then this last one is all about it. Changes term remediation to decontamination to reflect the fact that the definition of remediation in the statute limits the definition of remediation to the processing of a harvest batch that has failed microbiological testing into a solvent based concentrate. So that they acknowledge the problem in calling it remediation because of how broad remediation is. And they're really only talking about decontamination. That makes sense. It makes, it makes more sense of that first rule we read at the very beginning where they said adds definition of remediation and definition of decontamination. We we're like, what is that about? Just right off the bat. The last couple sections here, we got general operating requirements and procedures <clears throat> establishes requirement that a testing lab shall only report certificates of analysis for analytes, the laboratory conducted that are within the scope of the testing laboratory's accreditation. <laughs> That that sounds like a fast labs problem. Like we could do it. We could do anything. What do you need? You need me to tell you what's in it? I could tell you anything about it, regardless of our certification. What do you need it to say? I got a guy. I got a guy in my lab. His name's Tommy Jr. He got a job over here after he had problems at his last spot. OMMA was asking too many questions. Uh Clarifies laboratories may outsource testing and report those results on COAs, but must identify the laboratory that conducted the testing. That makes sense. Uh, it's just so crazy that they didn't have that stuff initially and you can just do whatever. It's so problematic. Uh, okay, so the last sections are sampling requirements and procedures and waste disposal. One of our favorite topics. So we got... A new, new established requirement that samplers must be trained on the testing laboratory's sampling protocols. <laughs> that makes sense. And that commercial licensees must document such training. These are like, I don't know how these weren't in the first one. Uh, requires samples to be clearly labeled with the following information. Primary sample or reserve sample. Name, license number, and batch number. Requires the sample field log to list the title and version of the laboratory's standard operating procedure that was followed when collecting the sample. Prohibits a laboratory from withholding from a commercial licensee a COA reporting a failed test. That's crazy that that was a thing. That's definitely what Fast Labs was doing. And then the commercial licensees get in trouble because all the shit's testing hot. That's probably why the recall on that other one disappeared after Fast Labs blew up. They're like, you guys did something wrong. It's like, how would we know we did something wrong? The tests were all made up. Now I'm blaming it all on Fast Labs. It's Fast Labs part. Until we get clarification as to why the news articles have been wiped, 
I'm sticking with uh, my cover-up theory. <laughs> no, this is this is rogue theory. Is what we're calling it. Allegedly, <laughs> featuring Carter's Corner on alleged uh, accusations. Uh, so yeah, so you can't keep failed tests secret anymore. That's good. Uh, clarifies that COAs must contain the required information, even in electronic form. You know, no matter how old your record keeping people are. Uh, and requires COAs to contain definitions of any abbreviated terms. Huh. That makes sense. Requires COAs to clearly and conspicuously list pass or fail in font size no smaller than the size of 12 point. People were doing that. That had to have been a thing where they were like, <laughs> they're like, it's not important. Let's put it in there in uh, two font. Uh, and you know it didn't say pass if they were putting it in there in two font. It's a word count, not a page count, okay? Your font size is not going to help you on this. And you think this company did like size 20 passes and then like size 2 fails? Or they're just, they're just like a real cruel uh, power monger that sits up there with a giant fail stamp. And anyone that passes, you know, you pass, who cares? We pass you on. But if you fail, they go, BAM! You know, big 40 put 40 point font on your deal, pass you then don't tell you about it. I think that the the rule before that about them needing to tell people about fail tests suggests that they may have only been highlighting the passes. So fail. Pass. Everybody pass. Hey. And then requires laboratory to immediately notify the department in the form and manner prescribed by department of any failed testing. So you gotta tell everybody now. Before you didn't have to tell anybody. It's your own little secret. Yeah. Just figure it out when you figure it out and try not to do it anymore. Last rule uh, requires commercial licensees to submit waste to a waste disposal facility within 90 days. And that's, you know, all the waste that qualified under that rule above that you can't have fun with on your own. Okay. Judgy. Uh, you sound, I don't know if you've watched it, but you sound like the family on, uh, 90 Day Fiance, Happily Ever After. Uh, there's a Moldovan guy, and his wife's family is like really not insightful when it comes to cultural diversity. And they're over there eating, and they have this weird pig shaving that's like the equivalent of our bacon that they eat over there. It's like heavy, almost all fat. And their commentary on it was like, no, it makes sense. I mean, they probably, you know, they eat the things. What it is, is they eat the things that Americans would throw away. It's like peasant food. They eat peasant food. That's like how you're talking about these, you know, fun uh, discards that, uh, you know, one person's trash is another man's dinner. Is that how it goes? Something like that. So that's, those are the rule updates. Um, those are exciting. That's uh, crazy that none of that existed before. Now cut it out with the secrets, you sketchy ass. And you know who we're talking about, Tommy Jr.? How do you keep getting in with these companies? We need to incre increase disclosure standards. So the next one on is the possible scam calls that were going out. And I don't know if this is more of Tommy's antics or what's going on here, but apparently someone had been making phony calls uh, to OMMA businesses claiming to be with the OMMA and the federal government. Could have been Fed Smoker. Uh, do you, uh, do you guys follow Proto around here or just a bunch of baby rapers? Uh, so I, I think that, uh, the legacy of Fed Smoker lives on in Tommy Jr. And I think this may be him trying to smoke out some baby rapers. Let's read. Yeah, that's what it is. And he doesn't have a 405 area code. That's your dead giveaway. Uh, Omen may calls only on 405 barrier codes. He's been kicked out of the city. To confirm their identity as an Omen may representative, you may ask that a caller send you an email from their state email address before you provide them with any information, like your social security number, credit card number, or anything like that. I don't know if you've ever tried to get the Omen may on the phone, but it's an impossible feat. And the chances of them calling you are even more slim than you reaching out to them. So... Uh, I feel like if they're going to be calling you, you're going to know about it in advance. You're probably going to get 
uh, bunch of notifications on social media and news articles put out before they actually call you. And I love their disclaimer at the end. I wonder who wrote this. This this last little part's kind of catty. It's like, uh, we are not currently scheduling any appointments, any individual appointments related to our seed to sale system, which that'd be weird anyway, with our licensees. And our staff does not make phone calls on behalf of the federal government. You know what I mean? That first part's like, oh, okay, that's informative. And then she's like, and we're not the federal government fool. Why would you call us? You know, I don't, I don't know what to do. All my accounts have been canceled over, you know, overdrawn. I don't even have a credit card. They said it was all done on a credit card. Professor Mbale, any representation that we are doing so strongly indicates you're receiving a spam call. Once again, we're not representing federal government here. The last update is the compliant access issues for patients. Okay. And on that one, it looks like they were just having trouble getting in uh, at the end of October. We don't know if that was due to the ice storm or due to them not having their stuff up and ready because the window for reapplications hadn't opened. But it seemed like they solved that one overnight. So that one's not one we'll hang on to too much. I mean, I bet they didn't have power or, you know, Cox was down in my neighborhood for like four days. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I wonder where their actual physical location is. They're at the health department, Oklahoma health department. Oh yeah. They were definitely without power because the election board was out power for, uh, until like the day of early voting. Yeah. Um, well, that's the, that's the updates on all the news for October. Um, we also were going to go over, uh, application. I don't know if we want to do that today or next time. Yeah. Um, how long have we been running? We've been about an hour. I think we're, I think we might be good for this one and we can do a full breakdown. Yeah, we can do a full rundown of it. Yeah. Uh, that'd be fun. So... For, this was enlightening. Yeah. A little, a little scary. It is scary. It's exciting now that they actually have it straightened out, though. Um, I'm glad to be on the boat. Yeah. And we'll we'll check in. There's there's another recall that came out November 4th that we'll cover on our November summary of news. A um, little preview. Empire Strains LLC and Kush Candy 420 LLC are going to get a deep dive. Uh so be excited about that. Oh, that should be fun. We'll see if they've manufactured any drinking pillows or anything cool like that before <laughs> they got into this. I'll see what made for TV products these owners got rich doing. Yeah. But uh and hair extensions made out of dog hair. Yeah, definitely not human hair. You know, maybe horse horse hair. That's the pricey stuff. Yeah. That's the pricey stuff. They you know, they figured out a system. If you set up a religion that requires you to shave your long, luscious black hair, uh, you can obtain yeah. it all through um, donation and then sell it on a markup out in L.A. to the Kardashians. Dude, I used to donate my hair to Locks for Love, and then I found out they were like, as creepy as it sounds, selling the hair. Um, not, it wasn't going to make not for love cancer kid wigs. And I have undyed red hair, so it's like, it goes, like, I'm honestly, my hair is worth more than, uh, than like, almost anything I own if it's, like, 12 inches. But I don't grow it out like that anymore. I had to get a mortgage. Yeah, you found out that it wasn't being sold for love and had to get out of the business. Yeah, and uh, every time... You know, you grow your hair down past your shoulders and then cut it off suddenly. People are like, did you get arrested? <laughs> yeah. Do you have a court date or something? And all the way up until you get that long, they're like, haven't you been arrested and yet? I found that insulting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Why hasn't anyone arrested you? It does increase your odds. Like, that guy looks like a roadie from the 70s. Let's beat him with a stick. <laughs> Especially with all the rural counties you go out to. I'm super white, though, so I don't get shot. It's usually just like... Uh, just hara just you know, verbal harassment. Harassment. Just blatant harassment. Just country. Maybe the threat of prison rape. Just some good old country cruelty, you know? Like, we'll throw you in there with Bubba. It's like, what are you implying, sir? Bubba loves long that hair. Did I be sodomized? Yeah. <laughs> Bubba's, Bubba's been waiting for a long-haired girlfriend. 
Why is it always Bubba? And why is he so keen to rape me? Because women are not allowed in his cell and we don't get long hair boys yeah, around he wasn't here. Allowed, that's, that's why he's in there. He yeah. wasn't allowed around the women folk. Right? Well, he's we'll, simple minded and horny as hell. Hopefully, well, next time we'll get a little more info and find out whether Bubba knows Tommy Jr. I think that they're, <laughs> I think they're in on the Empire Strains and Kush Candy caper that's going on here that we'll get into next month. If I find that Anthony Jr. is behind any uh, of the Kush Candy stuff, I'm going to be flabbergasted. That's exciting. Uh, well, I'm Carter. And I'm Sean. And we'll talk to you next time. Thank you again for watching our episode. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like our video by hitting the thumbs up below, share it if you like it, and turn on the notification bell to make sure you never miss an episode. We'll talk to you next time.